Hey, what's up guys, Darkwing Dad here, bringing you a quick requested video. Uh, I'm gonna show you real quick how to wire up a DPDT switch, also known as a three-way switch, uh, to help you hardwire uh, actuators, servo motors, and any other DC motors, so check it out. All right, what's up guys? Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is just a quick uh, little how-to video. This was a requested video. Um, somebody wanted to know how to wire up the switch uh, that I did in my servo video uh, for the faceplate. So what I'm gonna do is just show you some of the components that I use, uh, how to wire it up and how to determine what's best for your overall wiring scheme or whatever you're wiring up. So let me flip the camera around and show you what we're working with. All right guys, uh, so thanks for tuning in. Um, today is just gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. So I had one of my viewers uh, just ask a question on how to uh, wire up a DPDT switch, also known as a double pull, double throw switch, or a three-way switch. Uh, the reason why it's called a three-way switch is basically because you can throw it three ways. You can throw basically current one way, you can throw it the other way, or you can keep it completely neutral, which won't allow current to go in either direction. Now, this is a very um, useful piece because whenever you're dealing with things like actuators or servos, they are a DC motor, uh, meaning within the motor, it has to see positive and negative on one side for the motor to move one way. And then for it to move in the opposite way, you have to flip that polarity in the opposite direction. Uh, so these switches are great because essentially what they do is they throw polarity in opposite directions each way you flip the switch. Um, so really what you have to do is you have to get one of these switches and you can get them on Amazon. You can just put in three-way switch or DPDT switch. And essentially what you have is you've got... Um, I use colors. Obviously, you don't have to use colors, but I did just for explanatory purposes. These are all soldered on. Um, you can use little spade connectors, but soldering is better because if it's getting mounted in a faceplate or something like that, um, it doesn't take up as much room. The spades kind of, they'll kind of sit up here a little bit higher and then it might hit your head or hit your hip or your hand or wherever you're putting the switch. So I like to just use uh, solder and wire because you can smush it down and it's not gonna come loose or anything. So, um, but basically what you have is like I said, so each side of this switch, I'll get in nice and close, each side of this switch is gonna throw polarity, okay? So when this switch gets flipped up this way, it's gonna throw positive this way and negative that way, okay? When we do it this way, it's going to throw negative this way and positive that way. But if you look, they're on opposite sides. So negative is on this side of the switch here, but it's on this side here, it's on the opposite side. You wouldn't want it on the same side because then it's just gonna do the same thing either way you flip the switch. We want this polarity to be reversed and switched each each direction we, we, we flip the switch. So the way you wire it is you basically take um, whatever wire here, whether it's positive or negative, and you're gonna solder it on this side here and you're gonna jump over to the opposite. So you're basically making an X with the wire. So you're going positive here, positive there, negative here, negative there, okay? Um, and you solder them on and then you have your connections, okay? Then in the middle, that is actually going to be the power that is outputted to whatever you're wiring it to. So this you wanna hook up to your positive and your negative, okay? So, and it doesn't really, in a, in, a, in a sense, it doesn't really matter. Like on something like this, um, you've got, you know, black, which is obviously ground and white, which is positive. I could hook it up either way and it would still work. So in, in theory, it when you get to this stage to actually wiring the component up, it doesn't really matter which way you wire it because this motor can see positive and negative on each side of the motor. Um, and when you flip this switch, it's gonna throw it each way. Uh, the most important thing is obviously here, we wanna follow this to key. This is our load. So this is what's gonna get hooked up from our power source. So this is obviously positive and this is negative. So I'll show you real quick. Um, for this demonstration of the actuator here, I'm just gonna use two little um, power banks and these just have AAA batteries in them. Uh, so again, um, this is going to be our power source coming in. So we're going to connect red to red and we're going to connect black to black. So power to power, ground to ground, if I could grab the wire. Right, 
It's all set up, good to go. My switch is in neutral or off, so it's not throwing current either way. I twist these connectors together. Obviously, if you're doing this, you want to tape all these off or solder them or use buck connectors or whatever. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. These little power packs here, if you use them, they have on off switches. Obviously, they're both um, in the on position. Um, but here we have our actuator. And you can see I flipped it one way. And it is protruding outwards. And then it stops. Now, very important thing. Actuators, not all of them have a relay uh, cutoff. So what, what some of these components have is they'll actually have a relay in them that shuts power off to the motor. This particular one does not, okay? So what will happen, if I left this switch up, eventually it would burn out the motor. So if you're wiring something in this fashion, you wanna make sure you flip it to this center, this neutral position, that way power is shut off. I could leave it like this all day, it's not gonna damage the motor. If I leave it in this position up, it's gonna burn out the motor. So do not do that, okay? And then obviously to retract it in, you would just flip the switch the other way. And you can see it's coming in. Boom. Now, one way you would know if you do have a uh, relay, basically a, a relay cut uh, cut out that cuts off power, um, you'd hear like a little click inside here. Um, you don't hear any click. So that's one way how you would know if you're unsure. Um, when you would flip this down or up and it either fully extends or fully retracts and you'd hear a little click inside Mine doesn't do that. So I know it doesn't have that relay that shut that power shut off source um, So what you always want to make sure you do when you're not using this you want to flip this back into The neutral position because it will continue to throw power to whatever you're setting it to now You may sit there and say wow that relay or that uh, that actuator is pretty slow but what you can do is uh, you can add another power pack to this because right now this is actually only getting uh, six volts uh, This can work up to 12 volts. So 12 volts it'll work really fast um, So let's just say like, you know, you're like, oh, well, it's just it's it's not fast enough, you know Okay, no big deal. So what we'll do is we'll just add a battery pack to this So now we have these battery packs ran in series and you'll notice that it works a lot faster So you can see there that depending on what speed um, you want components to work at, they don't always need 12 volt. Uh, this particular one is getting nine and it's working a lot faster. Um, I'll probably keep it between nine and 12. Six is way too slow. Um, and I'm gonna do different sorts of, of power packs and things like that. But um, this is just an example. Um, if you're doing something really basic, you can get these little battery packs here and they work really good. Uh, like I said, each one of these battery packs is, it, like I said, it's ran off triple A's. Um, so if you're not sure of, you know, what, um, what voltage or you know your your amperage milliamperage things like that uh it typically says right on here so uh you know 1.5 volts so you have two of these in each so it's not that hard to determine um amperage can sometimes be uh difficult uh they don't always list it on here so sometimes you just might have to um, google it and see what the exact amperage is um, obviously things like lithium ion batteries are going to carry a little bit more they're going to be a little bit more durable uh heavy duty they're going to last longer uh hold the charge longer so uh, this is just st strictly for demonstration purposes I wouldn't recommend just using like a standard alkaline battery um, it's gonna wear out pretty fast on you they, these are great for like lights and stuff but for things for motors they're you're gonna burn through them pretty quick so again just for demonstration purpose um, just a quick little uh, overview on doing an actuator and then obviously with whatever um, you know power source that you were gonna do um, you would essentially do the same thing with a servo motor and you would wire it up the same way as the actuator and make sure you flip that switch both way, both ways, uh, one to open, one to close, uh, just as seen in the uh, original um, uh, servo video uh, that I had done. And um, I recommend using the um, MG90Ss. Uh, they have the metal gears, they work a lot, bit better, a lot better. 
You can see I kind of have some of my parts from the uh, Crashworks kit on there. So I'm assembling that right now as we speak. So uh, I should have an update for that helmet for you shortly. It's always good just to kind of um, test things before um, and after. You can see. <laughs> um, so even if you don't have everything in the helmet, it's always good just to kind of wire it up just to see uh, which way it's going. Um, I'm putting the Crashworks kit together right now. So I'll be putting all these fun pieces together. And I should have an update for you with that once it's actually in the helmet. There's really no point in doing it when it's not in the helmet yet. So, um, but that's just a quick tutorial um, to give you an outlook, a uh, little bit of a view if you're trying to do it old school, the hardwire way, um, using a DPDT switch and a couple different power sources. Like I said, it's going to vary um, based on what you're using and how you're doing it. Um, but like I said, um, for me, um, you know, these actuators are going to be my go to, uh, the servos. Um, are gonna be the uh, the MG90s, they work really good, the S-Series, and uh, like I said, it's just, uh, you can see, you just flip it one way and then flip it the other way, and it'll work the same way. Like I said, you've got a short time with these servos, they kind of work really quick, so you gotta flip that switch off really quick. But when I end up getting to my suit, I'll actually show you how to wire up the timer relays, which I'm gonna have for both the actuator and the servos. Um, those are going to be programmed to basically turn on uh, and stay on for a short second and then basically turn off. So that'll be more uh, in the suit. But yeah, I just want to put this video up just because uh, it was requested and it's pretty easy. So just showing you how to wire up this three-way switch. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop me a comment in the comment section and I'm going to flip all these batteries off so I don't waste them. Um, but yeah, just leave me a comment or if you have any questions and until next time, guys, we'll see you then. Thanks.